To make eyes for the next gen, we need to have a really nice sculpt. First step in sculpting is setting the stage. This is used as a game character, so we need to have the correct scale. Next, I construct the anatomy of the eye. In games, we split the mesh into two sections, the inner eye and the outer eye. The inner eye is where we texture the iris and the sclera, you know, the colored and white parts you're familiar with. The outer eye is for housing reflections. It's where we get that realistic wet look. For realism, games technology has changed. Nowadays in studios, we use the latest RTX graphics cards. You know those monsters I'm talking about. Parallaxing is becoming outdated. Instead, we go for ray trace accuracy. Lucky for us artists, that involves sculpting. So now you know this setup for success, let's start with sculpting. I make use of radial symmetry. So this duplicates the brush strokes all around the mesh and it saves you a lot of time. Masking protects areas of the sculpt. So here I can use it to design the shape of the iris and it gives a clear separation of form. Once the design is locked in, I can go wild inserting all the fibers of the iris. In a moment, I'll show you an amazing hack for getting really detailed fibers. But first, I promise I'll give you some sculpting tips to help you on your journey. Here are three key principles you can use to improve your sculpts. Start with big shapes first, work from a distance and focus on key areas rather than getting lost in all the details too early. Next, really fine tune your brush settings. So sharpen your tool before you use it. And this small step will save you so many hours of cleanup. And don't sweat it, keep some roughness in your work. Those natural imperfections add character and life to your sculpt. Remember you're creating characters, not robots. So let it flow, let it be organic and rough. That being said, as game artists, sometimes we don't have enough resolution. It doesn't make sense sculpting thousands of fibers. So here's a trick for you to save time. I use it on so many of my projects. So first I create a single fiber, then I duplicate it to create a really small cluster literally how it's made in real life. So it's the advice I give to students at university is always make assets how they are made in real life. I then use something called an array, very technical, but it basically duplicates the mesh in a precise radial pattern and I can choose how many it's done. So you'll notice I leave a couple of gaps here and there. This is so you don't see the repetition. So I add variation and then duplicate it once more. So repeating the process again and again, I save loads of time but with lots of detail. You'll see how this step improves the sculpt later. But first, here's a little trick I use to get the details out of your sculpt. First, I isolate the iris and apply something called a height map, which is a black and white texture that shows parts of the sculpt that are popping out and digging in. You can get them from scans or make them yourself. This one I did myself. So don't worry, I'll show you this in detail in the upcoming videos. My suggestion to all the artists out there is don't blindly follow the height maps. Use them as a guide while manually sculpting for better control. One place you definitely need more control is retopology. I've made three PDFs, tips, problems, and a cheat sheet. Click the link below and download 50 plus pages of tips and tricks. And if you want to take it that extra step further, there's a huge series on retopology, baking, and unwrapping that can be found on YouTube members. For a low poly eye, it's easy, right? Well, kind of. For game assets, we don't always need to create a new low poly mesh. Instead, we can reuse the base mesh from the high poly sculpt. My advice to you is always see if you can save time by reusing parts of your high poly. For the eye, this is a perfect example because we can use the lowest subdivision. Because the eye is spherical, we actually need quite a lot of geometry to get rid of jagged edges. In modern games, geometry is quite cheap, so focus on making it look really smooth. But to get the best bakes, we need to perfectly align the low poly and the high poly. I'll jump into Blender or Maya and check for any messy artifacts. I've seen hundreds of students bakes. 80% of issues are really down to misaligned geometry. In this members video, I show you the workflow of how I find and deal with artifacts. So check it out later if you're interested in that. Now for reverse 3D origami. You can master these unwrapping tips to get you closer to being a pro. So the fundamentals of unwrapping, we're trying to achieve decent texture resolution for the final asset. And we want to do this while having minimal distortions. So too many distortions can be bad, but I'll show you why they are also good at the same time. I do the unwrapping both in Blender and Maya, 
just depends how I'm feeling on that day. So here's the problem. A majority of details are in the center of the eye, but when we unwrap the painting area we need to get squished into this tiny space in the center of the UV. So as artists, it's our job to skillfully redistribute this. And we do this through clever distortions. To do that, I face select the most important areas, applying a soft selection or proportional editing. This removes the texture density from unimportant areas and transfers it where it's needed. Remember how I said parallaxing is a thing of the past? In the next gen, sometimes we actually separate the iris all the way off to the side. But for current gen and a majority of games, this is the best workflow. Again, there are videos around the corner that break this down fully. So turn on your notifications to make sure you don't miss those. So on that note, and before we move on to the texturing secrets, after this, you'll see videos on how to make the eye from start to finish. I'm giving the final eye away to YouTube members, including a full commentary of the workflow. So if you're interested in getting that extra knowledge, there's hours of exclusive content to catch up on. And every month you can get your work reviewed by me personally. And at the same time, be part of a focus set of like-minded artists in our private chat channels. So click join below to check it out. But if not, there's loads of free content I enjoy making on this channel. And we have the biggest and most amazing character art channel on Discord. All those links can be found below. Here's the secret guys. Texturing is all about your high polys and your bakes. Remember that trick I promised you earlier? Well, it's completely changed the way I approach texturing. And here's how you can use it on your projects. I scroll through my baked maps and see what interesting masks I can find. So this is literally everything that I can think of, ambient occlusion, edges, curvature, and different parts of the map. You'll see how I use these later, but here's where I set up zones for the eyes. Using advanced masking techniques, so if I need to come back and change anything for playtesting, I can do it dynamically on the fly. I'll chuck in some rough textures and test how the render is coming out, and inside of the renders if the colours are matching, and what sort of lighting I'll be using for the presentation. Part of this process, you know that soft glowing look you get from the eyes? This is formed from something called subsurface scattering. It lets light melt into the surface, bouncing all over the place. Remember how I said that scale is important? This is because subsurface scattering is physically based. For the veins, I like to paint these manually. It's way more fun and organic. I draw squiggles lightly with my Wacom pen, mixing up the thickness as I draw. I had a slight height map to make the veins pop out. I combine these with filters like blur and levels to adjust the surface of that shape. For characters in games, we actually use these masks for amazing blood pumping effects. But that's a video for another time. I briefly touched on it in the commentary. For this, I wanted the veins to really pop out, but at the same time, I need to use it on multiple characters. So I did tone it down. You know, every character artist needs an eye in their library. So imagine how many times you can reuse this and save some time. So making it quite generic is a good idea. You know that wobbly effect on the eye that really gives a level of realism? Here I'll show you three different techniques for texturing the cornea from new to pro. So you know the best workflow for your projects. Well, the outer eye, the only thing we really need to focus on are the normal maps. So the first way is really quick and simple. You can drag a generic noise texture from the internet into Substance Sampler. The benefit is it's really quick, but Substance Sampler is a terrible software, very buggy and low levels of adjustability. The second is somewhere in between. It's nice because we can stay inside of Substance Painter. We use noise information. The benefit here is we can add multiple layers and see how it's actually going to look in the final render. Now for the third way, and it's the one I prefer, it's really a skill that you should have as a character artist, and that's utilizing Substance Designer. It will give you full control over all your textures. So I set up node networks and procedurals. I can create detailed tileable textures off to the side and even fine tune the normal maps of the iris to perfection. We need to take the eyeball from 80% to 100%. And that's where lighting and presentation comes in. Here are my tips for getting the most out of lighting an eye. Lighting a simple shape like an eye can be a little bit tricky. That's why HDR eyes are essential. I carefully choose one that simulates a realistic window and an environment reflection. These work really, really well. So for optimization in games, we can be a little bit tricky. We use fake reflections and glare effects for the eyes because the lighting scenario is not always going to be perfect and the eyes can come off a little bit dull. For presentation, use minimal lighting, just enough to show the texture details. Since the eye won't be perfectly lit in the game like we were talking about, it needs to look good under various lighting conditions. Focus on this for all your game assets. That's why I've included both rastered and ray traced versions for download. So showcasing different rendering approaches that we use in the games engine. So by now you should be confident with the full workflow. We've gone over all the tips and tricks that get you closer to that professional level, but there's more. 
Two things that I have left for you to do. The first is click this video to see how to sculpt the eyes inside of ZBrush. We're taking it all the way into Marmoset, so every single step. The second for my YouTube members, click this link to download the project files. All instructions are there, plus a couple of extra footages of making the content. There's just one of many benefits of being a 3D Mutiny member. So you can catch up on hours and hours of exclusive game art content, and every month get your work reviewed by me, including questions and answers plus a really cool VIP private Discord community. So catch you in the discords and see you on the next video.